What's next? The Big 12, if they add Colorado, are they going to turn their attention to Arizona or is it UConn who will get that next invite? We'll have a conversation about that on today's edition of the Neighborhood Watch. And also, let's shout out a Big 12 athlete who did an all time, had an all time performance in the NCAA baseball tournament. Quick shout out for Trey Richardson's coming on later on in the show. This is the Neighborhood Watch. I am your host, Josh Neighbors. Here on Crystal Ball College Football, part of the 365 Sports Network. You guys can follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You all can also find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Also, like the video, leave comments as well on YouTube, and find us wherever you guys get your podcasts. Look up Neighborhood Watch. Look up Josh Neighbors Neighborhood Watch. You will be able to, able to find it. We might switch up the name a little bit. Maybe go like Big 12 Neighborhood Watch just to put something Big 12 as an identifier in the name so it's a bit easier to find, but we'll let you all know if that ends up being uh, what we do with this. But uh, Josh Neighbors Neighborhood Watch, you all be able to find us there podcast-wise. So we are now June 5th uh, in the throes of June here. No Pac-12 TV deal to speak of at this point in time, which only intensifies the talks surrounding the Big 12 Conference, picking off teams, from the Pac-12, and we've covered the Colorado aspect of this from every single angle, really. Is it good for CU? Is it good for the Big 12? Does it make a lot of sense? It kind of does make sense that Colorado is the first school with the way what we've been hearing and whatnot. Uh, reporting says conversations are being had, despite what folks might be saying. Conversations are being had. Schools are doing their due diligence. The big talking point now is how much longer is the Pac-12, how how much longer do they have really to find a deal before schools say, well, either A, you didn't produce a deal, or they say, all right, we want that final deal. That deal's not good enough. That's really the big talking point, right? People are saying this, okay, uh, does Colorado, does Arizona, do they need to wait longer? Do they need one more deal to be sent, to be, to be finalized, you know, uh, one more offer, if you will, to justify leaving? Or could they do it now? And that's what folks are wondering. That's what, at least that's what I'm wondering. That's what a lot of us are wondering. I believe there's justification to leave now, not just saying that as a Big 12 person, but as somebody who has covered this entire saga from the beginning. And from the beginning, I mean when Oklahoma and Texas left the Big 12 conference. I have been covering this conference realignment craziness, whether it be for Sirius XM, whether it be for Locked On Big 12, or now here. I have covered it wire to wire. And one conference, the Big 12, responded a lot better than one conference, the Pac-12, did. And so because of this covering wire to wire, you know, I feel like at this point in time, justification is a plenty for Pac-12 schools to leave. That's where I'm at. I think you all can understand that. But I think the reality is a lot of folks see it this way. Schools uh, like Colorado are kind of wanting that final justification. They want to say, look at this deal. Look at this insufficient deal that George Klyavkov handed us. It is not good enough. It is not going to be good enough. The future is too murky. We must go elsewhere. That's what a lot of us are waiting to see. We don't know if that will happen. Next piece of this, though, if Colorado were to be the first one, And it feels like right now there is momentum surrounding Colorado being the first one that would depart, that would leave. My question here today is, where would the Big 12 look next? I think the number two options are that there's three. There's three really ones that make a lot of sense. Like, I guess you could group the four corner schools together, although Arizona feels like the real first step in that, right? The two, the two schools that have put up, I think, the least amount of resistance to the idea of joining the Big 12 have been Arizona and Colorado. Their athletic directors, their presidents have really said outright, like, we will do what's best for our university, maybe without listing the Big 12. But, um, you know, outright just saying, we will do whatever is best for us in whatever form that takes. And I think, obviously, with the reporting, acknowledging the big 12's involvement and in all of that it is pretty clear that the big 12 is kind of that that option right the big 12 is whatever is whatever is best that means joining the big 12 in a lot of senses all right um so and i think you know kind of uh, arizona's the avatar for like we're we're next we're, we're the next schools utah has been less resi- probably the least resistant if you will arizona state's been somewhat resistant as well but i think they'd all fall in line i think we'd all kind of agree with that 
Um, but if we're doing even numbers here, which I think a lot of us do believe that we're going to be doing this process in even numbers, the next other schools that you will talk about are San Diego State and are UConn. And so if this is if Colorado is joining the league, what direction would you all go in next? Would you all say, all right, we've got one of the Pac-12 schools. Maybe we could revisit that. Let's go with UConn next. Let's go with UConn next to go to the East Coast. Colorado is pushing out further west. Uh, UConn gives a northeastern flavor to the Big 12 that they do not yet have. That's the direction that I think they should, I'm just saying like you as a person, thinks they might want to go in, right? Uh, and make the case for northeast is next. Or you might be somebody that says, I think we should go with Arizona next. Land that kill shot. Expand further into um, into Pac-12. You know, really damage that league. Go in that direction. Or you might be somebody who's saying, let's get that fourth and final time zone secured. Let's go attack San Diego State next. So I'm going to go in order, order of what I would do if I was Brett Yormark. To me, there's no doubt about this. Number two needs to be Arizona. And that is the next place that I'm attacking. And here is why. If you are Brett Yormark, the most uh, comparable competition that you can do the most damage to is the Pac-12. If we are in a living in a world in which it's a really a, a big two and everybody else, which I think we are moving towards that if you don't believe we are already in that right now. But if you if we are operating in a space where you believe it's the big two and a lot of other teams, you want to be able to say, all right, who are we competing against? The ACC, ironclad grant of rights, big, you know, long-term deal. Not really sure how much damage we can do to that league, although we like our chances to distribute more money and earn more money than that league here in the coming years. You like your chances there, but there's really not a whole lot you can do. No matter what folks are saying out there, guys, I know some people are putting out there, oh, you know, the ACC can break it. Like nothing that I have heard from people I talk to in ACC country and from people that have been doing reporting, you know, like, uh, you know, I mean, Tom, I've mentioned this a bunch, but when I work with Tom Luganbill on College Sports Sundays, and he does a lot of work for the ACC channel. Uh, and from all the reporting I read too, ironclad are the terms, is the term I should say, used when we discuss the ACC, right? It feels like the ACC is going to need some drastic shift in something to happen for folks to break that GOR, that grant of rights. So if we think that's the case, you're really competing with the Pac-12. That's the other, that other conference. You know, if you take one team, there is a world in which they could replace that team and try to keep moving forward. It's a bad look, sure, but it's a world in which that can happen. So if I'm Brett Yormark and I'm competing there, I want to land the kill shot on the Pac-12. And what I mean kill shot is the Pac-12 might exist, but if you live in a world where you poach two of their teams – they might be able to replace those two, but guys, Oregon and Washington are not going to stick around in a diluted conference. They're not going to want to do it. They'll go take less money in the short term somewhere else and then eventually cash in long term because they have strong brand recognition. They will go somewhere else to do it. They'll take a cheap deal from the Big Ten. Look, like even if it's like $40 million a year, you know, eventually the next go around, I think, in terms of uh, television contracts, they, they'd, you know, they'd be full partners, whatever. I think, I think also the, the TV companies like, you know, we can, we can get these two brands for pretty cheap. Uh, you know, CBS, uh, Fox, NBC. I think they'd be very willing to take a couple brands for a discount for a short period of time and they eventually make them whole partners, whatever that looks like when the next Big Ten television deal comes up. So I think that is the direction that the Big 12 should go, is targeting a second Pac-12 team. Because what does a Pac-12 offer? Late night TV games. All right. And so if you take those, you are now, you, you can now be the conference that's offering late night TV. You also are the conference that's offering television slots across the board from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., <clears throat> excuse me, Central Time. You've got Big 12 football action happening across the day. You can offer that. You can offer Colorado against UCF kicking off early. You can offer Colorado against UCF kicking off late right? You want to be able to offer that across the board and you, you damage somebody else that could also be offering that and make them, you know, oh, at SMU, at San Diego state, they still are not 
as good of a league. You're still damaging that. And once again, I think of two go, it, it's, that's 20, that's 20% or uh, what is it? Yeah, it's 10 team at least 20% of the league, right? Leaving. I think that damages them very much. And I think the television conversation for them changes too. Uh, what kind of TV contract they are landing. So I think that is why you want to land the kill shot. You know, don't give them a chance to get back up, add that second school and once again, if you're adding in Arizona, because I think Arizona is the most likely to do it at this point in time, you probably get ASU, you probably get Utah on the back end, sure. But Arizona's been more receptive. The fans seem more receptive. They fit in logically with that. You're expanding kind of towards the West, towards California. But they're also their basketball is fantastic. It just makes a ton of sense to go the Arizona direction next. All right. Um, I would say in terms of like who I would target after that, I would go for San Diego State next, but in terms of likeliness, I think the UConn, uh, the UConn possibility is much more likely because both schools are going to take a little bit less money, I think, you know, from what they're making now. But UConn's more likely because, look, their football is not very good. So I think they'd welcome a chance to join a league like the Big 12. Also, their basketball just won a national championship. To the, pre, the two the previous two national champions that def, separate teams were in the Big 12. Texas Tech made the championship game before that. It's a you know UConn is relatively close. They're in the tri-state area, right? Maybe not stores in the tri-state area, but uh, UConn is in that tri-state consideration. So you are bringing the ability to go to New York City and have a reasonable reason to go to New York City if you bring in the UConn Huskies and you bring them into the Big 12. That makes sense to me. And also we know Brett Yormark has an affinity for basketball and he has an affinity to, he wants to be more involved in New York, making this a national conference. So I think UConn is more likely, although if you were to ask Josh neighbors, what you would like you'd ask me to do, I would want San Diego state next, but we talked with Mark Ziegler, go back and listen last week, guys. It sounds like that San Diego state wants to give the PAC 12 every single opportunity to get them in because they don't like the idea of having all of their brands, whether it be baseball or softball or soccer or whatever else it is, women's basketball traveling across the country. They don't like their non-revenue sports traveling as much. And so the PAC 12 is a much more natural fit for them. Now, San Diego state definitely fits the profile of what Brett Yormark wants to have. He wants a national conference. He wants to be a coast-to-coast -coast league. He said so. He said as much last week, uh, you know, during when, when he was uh, at, at availability. He said that's what he wanted to have. And so they fit that last time slot, that last time zone, where the Big 12 is not. Sure, they'd love to have another East Coast team. So if I think if the Big 12 had it their way, San Diego State would be the next one. But... I think San Diego State, you know, once again, guys, Mark Ziegler covers them, was on here last week. I, 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 uh, I, I encourage you all to go check that out. So San Diego State, probably the last one that would want to go, which really kind of gets us back now to the Big 12, or excuse me, UConn versus Arizona conversation. I think that's where this takes place. Do you go one pack, one not? I would go for the kill shot. I would try to get two Pac-12 schools. That would be my aim. That would be my goal if I am Brett Yormark. I want the two Pac schools. I want to um, uh, disable. I want to shut down. I want to harm. I'm not saying I want this, but I want to harm the competitor as much as possible, do as much possible damage as I can. And I think you do as much possible damage by taking two of their schools. That is why I would target Arizona. Let me know what you all think about this idea about Arizona versus UConn. Who are you going after next? Let me know in the comments section below. I would love to know what your all's thoughts are. Once again, like these videos. And so that's, that's the direction I would go. If you add CU, who is next? I'm going after Arizona. If you can't get Arizona, sure, UConn. But I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm one of those folks that thinks, hey, if you're going to take one, you might as well take two. Do the damage. Maybe you can also get UConn involved in that as well. I, I, I don't think... I don't think you taking Arizona and Colorado excludes you from doing UConn. I think adding Arizona and Colorado makes you uh, more likely to add San Diego State, but I also don't think it, I don't think it factors too much in 
on what happens to you with UConn. So that option is still there. That's why I'm trying to do the most possible damage to the Pac-12 in one fail swoop. That's my thought on all of this. Once again, let me know what you all think. All right, to wrap up the show, guys, we got to give props to a Big 12 athlete who tied the record for most runs driven in in a uh, NCAA tournament game. Trey Richardson, infielder yesterday for TCU, hit not one, not two, but three home runs. He hit a grand slam in the first, a grand slam in the second. I believe it was a two-run home run later on in the game. He was five for six. He drove in 11 runs, once again ties the record, in TCU's 20-5 win. Now, they play Arkansas today at two. They'll do it again at eight if they have to. But, I mean, this kid, he had hit two home runs the entire season. He was there. I forget the kid's name, the shortstop. Somebody will probably correct me on this. Uh, let's see. Where I had him up this morning? The uh, The kid from TCU. They basically they brought in this really good shortstop on oh, double checking now. Uh Anthony Silva, freshman infielder they brought in. And Richardson's job, they said yesterday in the broadcast, was to shepherd along Silva and get him to a spot where, you know, kind of going to get him acclimated in the mid in the in the infield. Then, you know, Richardson comes to this game and says, "Hey, kid, I got this. Hey everybody, just watch this." Oppo on all three of the home runs he hits from the right side he went out to right field and all the last one barely cleared the fence but he went deep on all three of those he gave a little michael jordan shrug as well rounding the bases what a performance shouting out trey richardson shouting out tcu too not sure what happens today i might be wrong about this but my god they'll play whoever uh indiana state comes out of the Terre Haute regional holy hell trey richardson have yourself a day as dominant a day at the plate as I have seen for a team and for an individual in an NCAA tournament game to Trey Richardson, Kirk Sarloos, TCU baseball, take a bow for what you did to the, the hogs where I live yesterday. That will do it for today's show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. I'm at Josh neighbors underscore. You can find the show at NW pod three, six, five. Also make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, and uh, we'll see you folks tomorrow.